Hello, and welcome to Cyber Safety News here on the Safety News Network. My name is Adam Blue, and today we're going to dive into the world of cybersecurity and talk specifically about the resources you can use if you're interested in gaining knowledge in cybersecurity, maybe jumping into that world yourself. And in fact, even if that's not something you plan to do as a career, it's just kind of good to understand cybersecurity in general as things you use from day to day, whether it's devices or apps, there's layers of security around it. And sometimes the average person doesn't understand that. Also, as some don't understand uh, security initiatives, the federal government will be, um, I guess, removing the ability to gain funds for different organizations if they do not follow security standards. The federal government is really wanting to keep uh, the data, uh, the interest of the U.S. population secure, and that does require companies that do data gathering or have personnel information to have uh, some standard security practices in place. Some don't, some people don't take it seriously. I'm sure there's plenty of times you haven't taken the MFA uh, uh, security seriously when it comes to uh, having to get your phone out, copy a code, put it in uh, the browser in order to access it. But the federal government is is clamping down on this and wanted to make sure if they're gonna be sending funds to companies that they're using the right security initiatives. So we'll dive into that. Um, but yeah, let's start with this 10 must read cybersecurity books for 2024. Because again, the cybersecurity landscape changes constantly. There are things you've probably researched in 2023 that might be different here in 2024. So, you know, this is on uh, HelpNet Security. Uh, and this is, uh, it was pushed to February 6th 10 must read cybersecurity books for 2024. Let's see, our list of cybersecurity books has been curated to steer your professional growth in 2024. This selection aims to provide comprehensive information, uh, security insights, and knowledge, ensuring you stay ahead in your career learning journey throughout the year. Okay, this first one, uh, Cyber for Builders, the essential guide to building a cybersecurity startup. So this is very interesting. Um, Cyber for Builders provides an overview of the cybersecurity industry from entrepreneurial lenses, breaks down the role of various industry players from investors to channel partners and acquirers, and offers insight into the trends shaping the future of security. Moreover, the book is packed with mental models, notes, and advice to help early stage cybersecurity founders get their ideas off the ground and solve problems young companies face around problem discovery, hiring, building products, and fundraising. So, you know, if you're not really interested in, in a startup or starting a business, that might not be for you. But if you are, I think this would be for anybody, anyone wanting to start a business. You're going to have to have a security foundation. That sounds like a good book for that. Let's see. Cybersecurity Career Master Plan. Proven techniques and effective tips to help you advance in your cybersecurity career. Um, very interesting. This might be more about, yeah, when it comes to finding a job, some of the requirements uh, knowing when it comes to cybersecurity, what software, what hardware, programs, etc. Uh, that one's pretty good. Okay, Evading EDR, the, the Definitive Guide to Defeating Endpoint Detection System. So, this book demystifies EDR, taking you on a deep dive into how EDRs detect adversary activity. The author uses his years of experience as a red team operator to investigate each of the most common sensor components, discussing their purpose, explaining their implementation, and showing the ways they collect various data points from the Microsoft operating system. Wow, this sounds like a good one for anybody that's looking to get a better understanding in cybersecurity, especially more in implementation, um, since they're talking about endpoints here. If it's smart, it's vulnerable. That's interesting. Uh, this book delivers an eye-opening exploration of the best and worst things the internet has given us. <laughs> From instant connectivity between any two points on the globe to organized ransomware gangs, the net truly really has been a mixed blessing. In this book, the author explores the transformative potential of the future of the internet as well as those things that threaten its continued existence, government surveillance, censorship, organized crime, and more. All right, Operationalizing Threat Intelligence, a guide to developing and operationalized cyber threat intelligence programs. Wow, that, that's a lot there. Operationalizing. That's a word I didn't really use much until I got into cybersecurity. So this sounds like this would be something as, you know, uh, you've started your business or you want to take more uh, security initiatives seriously within your business. Here's a way to operationalize it. That, that sounds like something that's worth checking out. 
Uh, Practical Cybersecurity Architecture, a guide to creating and implementing robust designs for cybersecurity architects. Within this book, you'll learn the fundamentals of cybersecurity architecture as a practice, a practical discipline. Once mastered, these fundamentals are evergreen approaches that can be applied and adapted to new and emerging technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning. You'll learn how to address and mitigate risks, design secure solutions in a purposeful and repeatable way, communicate with others about security designs, and bring designs to fruition. So this one brings up AI and machine learning, which is a big part of cybersecurity, especially getting into 2024. I didn't see that as a bullet point in any of the previous books I mentioned, but I'm sure something like that would be there. But again, that is kind of a newer approach to defending uh, cybersecurity attacks. So Project Zero Trust, ah, sorry about strategy for aligning security and the business. So yeah, this talks about the Zero Trust security strategy. This is something that um, Microsoft uses. I'm actually taught this as I am having to implement, uh, implement certain security standards uh, across really any vertical, because the idea is to take a zero trust approach, trust nothing, and give access as needed. I mean, that sounds very simple, but when you start using some of the security tools out there, you'll see that it's made for that. Don't make it all open and then just restrict as people come in. Restrict everyone and just give access as needed. So that's, yeah, the zero trust approach. That could be a good one. Let's see, the art of social engineering. Uncover the secrets behind the human dynamics in cybersecurity. Hmm, the art of social... This would be a good one. You'll learn the most intriguing psychological principles exploited by attackers, including influence, manipulation, rapport, persuasion, and empathy, and gain insight into how attackers leverage technology to enhance their attacks using fake logins, uh, email impersonation, fake updates, and executing attacks through social media. This book will equip you with the skills to develop your own defensive strategy, including awareness campaigns, phishing campaigns, cybersecurity training, and a variety of tools and techniques. That's excellent. That is just another book, another piece of knowledge that you need to have with you, and it's the social engineering. It, it doesn't matter how security technologies develop, the, the person, the person themselves is, is the one that you can use to get around um, technology. So the art of social engineering, um, I think that one would be worth checking out for sure. All right, the DevSecOps playbook, Deliver Continuous Security at Speed. Wiley CISO and CIO Sean D. Mack delivers an expert analysis of how to keep your business secure, relying on the classic triad of people, process, and technology to examine in depth every component of DevSecOps. In the book, you'll learn about why DevSecOps is uh, as much about people and collaboration as it is about technology and how it impacts every part of our cybersecurity system. So, yeah, they brought it up there. It's just as much about people and collaboration as it is about technology. So, yeah, that's great to have alongside these other uh, books. All right, in the language of deception, weaponizing next generation AI. Wow, this sounds good. This book delivers an inc- incisive and penetrating look at how contemporary and future AI can and will be weaponized for malicious and adversarial purposes. You will explore multiple foundational concepts to include the history of social engineering and social robotics, the psychology of deception, considerations of machine sentience and consciousness, and the history of how technology has been weaponized in the past. Wow, that just sounds very interesting in general, whether you're into cybersecurity or not. If you don't need cybersecurity as your day-to-day work, this book is probably good to check out just based on what it's talking about here. It's kind of taking that idea of deception, psychology, consciousness, um, yeah, and, and making it about how we deal with that in our lives and in security. So, yeah, that's a good one. So these books would probably need to be read by this next um, company that's being called out in this article here. Let's move on to that. Uncle Sam tells hospitals, meet security standards or no federal dollars for you. And that makes sense. There's a lot of times where there's certain, you know, state by state, company by company. It really depends what it is. But uh, the federal government can hand out money that can help uh, with with certain uh, initiatives. But there needs to be requirements met because the federal government's not wanting to only keep themselves safe, but people that are a part of it. So, Let's let's jump into this uh, here real quick. It does say expect new rules in the upcoming weeks. And this was back in January 10th, one of February, so this could be out already. U.S. hospitals will be required to meet basic cybersecurity standards before receiving federal funding, according to rules the White House is expected to propose in the next few weeks. 
This comes as hospitals and health clinics nationwide continue to be menaced by ransomware and cybercrime, uh, cybercrimes, okay, C-Y-B-E-R-C-R-I-M-S, cybercrimes, that's, that's a first, to diabolical tactics to make victims pay up. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid service, uh, Services, an arm of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, is reportedly drawing up rules connecting hospital IT security with funding, which are set to take effect before the end of the year. Citing an unnamed government official, this messenger report says the proposed rules will focus on those key cybersecurity practices that we really do believe bring a meaningful impact, and federal funding will hinge on hospitals enacting these basic network defenses. When asked about the draft rules, a CMS CMS spokesperson directed the register to a concept paper published in December that outlines the Department of Health and Human Services cybersecurity strategy. One of the key action areas in increasing accountability and coordination within the health uh, healthcare sector, the spokesperson told the register, CMS values feedback from stakeholders and continues to consider how to improve cybersecurity most effectively across the healthcare sector. CMS does not comment on the substance of policies before they are approved. Last year alone, at least 46 U.S. hospital corporations with a total of 141 facilities between them were hit by ransomware infections, and at least 32 of these networks had protected health information and other patient data stolen during the intrusions, according to MSOFT. For comparison, there were 25 of these affected hospital systems in 2022, InfoSec says. So we go from 25 to, uh, let's see, hospital systems to, and well, it says 46 corporations with a total of 141 facilities. Either way, uh, the numbers have increased there. And so the big takeaway here that I think you can apply in everyday life, even if you're not a cybersecurity expert, is there are just some baseline standards that need to be met, need to be met in order to get continued funding from the federal government to completely evolve and continue to add on to your cybersecurity initiative. And it makes sense. I really do think there are just some standards that need to be met. As new technologies emerge over time, that kind of happens like with the internet and then collecting of data, then there's regulations put out about limiting that, um, even limiting uh, exposure to children, depending on the type of content that's on the internet. So it's just Par for the course, I guess, when it comes to new technologies evolving, standards need to be met. I think people are finally coming out of this whole thing where sometimes security initiatives are kind of like a burden. Like, oh, I got a MFA here. Oh, I've got to add my information there. And then I've got to do this. It's, it's kind of like, yeah, we kind of need to do this. If we want to continue to get federal funding to continue the work we're doing, we need to be secure. So I, I think it's good to see stuff like this. Anyway, all thanks for watching this episode of Cyber Safety News. Again, I'm your host, Adam Blue. Please subscribe if you haven't. Like this video. Share it to others that are in uh, into cybersecurity so they can learn a thing or two. And actually, leave a comment, too. Let us know any other uh, cybersecurity things going on out there that we can talk about. We'd like to feature it on a future episode. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk later.